Hi, and welcome to the 10 square meter workshop. Today, I'll be continuing with my digital router design. This time it's the fence. If you missed part one, why not check it out? The design of the fence follows standard CNC practice of using linear guide rails, a ball screw to drive it, and a stepper motor. There's also extensive use of aluminium plate and angle. So, let's get building. The base plate is a piece of 8mm thick aluminium. It's 300 by 180. I drilled and countersunk all the holes on the mill. For more information on how this is done, see my scratch built CNC machine video, where I cover it in some detail. Though I'll be making extensive use of machine tools, this can all be done by hand, if great care is taken with the laying out. Next step is to set up the sliding carriage. This was fabricated in the same way and the task here is to align the ball screw down the centre. Everything else will be marked out from here. The mounting bolts can then be set out using a transfer punch. The centre 4mm plate has ends fabricated from 8mm plate, all together with allen bolts. Assembled, it looks like this from the top, and this at the bottom. With the stepper motor and ball screw in position and torque down, and the two rails fitted onto the bottom plate, bringing the two together means the mounting holes for the rails can be accurately aligned. And here it is, connected up for testing. Nice and smooth. It's now time to do the fence wiring. Firstly, I put two aviation sockets on the back of the plate. And slots put in the brackets to take the wiring. These were then wired together. Four pass-through for the stepper motor, never two go to the limit switches. And here it is, installed. The rear limit switch was fitted on one of the side brackets and the arm adjusted to trigger about one millimetre before the end of travel. And at the other end. The two switches are wired in parallel because hey, you know which way you're going. And even if you didn't, it's a limit switch. You need to stop. The wires were then hot glued down to keep them tidy. With all that wiring complete, it's time to test again and make sure it all works with the router motor working, etc. It's checking for interference really. Here's the fence moving in jog mode. And the router table. It's all working and it does with the router motor on too. Bit too noisy to film that. Now that I have the fence mechanism working, as you can see, it's time to make the fence itself. First I cut the slot for the router in this 2080 aluminium section. Next job is to mount the T-track on top of the rail to hold accessories like roller guides, feather boards, etc. To do this, I made five rather crude nuts, tapped to four millimetres. These are half mil off centre to align the T-track with the top of the rail. After bolting that firmly into place, the next step is to fit the linear rail to the top. This is what is going to carry the mitre attachment. For this, I use six millimetre square nuts, filed to shape. There were ten required, so quite a bit of filing. The 15mm bolts turned out to be 15 and a half, so a bit more filing. With the bolts in place, it can now be slid into the rail. The rail certainly adds to the rigidity of the fence. After putting the carriages on, I put end stops. Amongst other things, it stops the carriages coming off the rails, 
and that's never a good thing. The actual fence was bolted to the rest using five 5mm five bolts. To clamp the unit to the table I've made this piece of alloy sliding plate which fits in the teeth slot. This was drilled and tapped 6mm and parted in two to make the two clamps. The front face of the fence I'm making from Corian, the thermoplastic they make kitchens out of. These are offcuts. After machining the size, these were drilled and countersunk for 5mm bolts. The length of steel bar was then machined to match the profile. This was drilled and tapped with four 5mm holes and then cut into 25mm lengths. Using long nuts like this makes the sliding smoother. In position, they slide freely, but lock easily. The two carriages on the linear rail are joined together with an aluminium plate. This bolts on top and has threaded parts for securing bolts, and it is incredibly smooth. One piece of angle had the excess cut away and a rail fitted to one side using three bolts. I'm using these two knobs to fit them together. This screws down as a secure fit in the carriage. The two parts will be held together by four bolts, but to start with I've just got one in. This allows me to set it to an accurate 90 degrees, tightening up one bolt Ensuring it's true before carefully removing, clamping and drilling out the other three holes. And then machined or mating surfaces smooth. Purely cosmetic but I think it makes a difference. With all four bolts in it is now set square to the table which is the most important criteria. The mitre fence itself is fitted with four bolts and the whole thing is as smooth as. The final piece of work for the fence is to make a cover. And here it is, bent in the raw, ready to shape. After a bit of filing and shaping, it now fits. The final major part, the dust port, was 3D printed. And it's held in place by two 4mm bolts and a matching hole cut in the cover. With a final hole in the side to take the zero detection connection I'm ready to give it a coat of paint. And with that job done the route master is ready for action. And so that's the fence made. Next time we'll start putting it all together. See you then.